Okay, welcome to Kojo's Math, and today we're going to talk about prime factorization. Prime factorization. Well, prime, the one thing you have to know is you have to know that what involves with prime factorization. Prime numbers and composite numbers. You need to know what those are, first of all. Prime numbers only are numbers that only have two factors, one and itself. They only have two factors. Do you recall from the last video, from our last couple of classes, what factors are? Any numbers that multiply together to get another number. Any two numbers, that or any numbers, it could be three numbers, that multiply together to get another number. Those are factors. It could be more than two. But with prime numbers, there's only two numbers that multiply together to get that number. For instance, number three. One times three is three. That's all you can do. Never any fractions. Fractions are not prime numbers. Nothing to do with fractions or decimals. 3, 5, 7, 11, so forth and so on are prime numbers because they only have factors of 1 in itself, themselves. Then you have composite numbers. Composite numbers have more than two factors always. Com composite numbers always have more than two factors. And yes, you need to know how to spell both of these. An example is 20, 25, etc. What are the, some of the factors of 20? 1 times 20. 2 times 10, 4 times 5, 25, 1 and 25, 5 and 5, those are all factors. So there are more than 2 for those. So that's how you remember the difference. But there are two numbers that are extremely unique. One is neither prime nor composite. It's because of the definition of prime number. Because you say, well, it's only got one factor. Exactly. It only has one factor. What are the factors of 1? 1 times 1. 1 times 1. It's only got one number that you multiply it by. So it doesn't meet the definition of a prime number. So 1 is just 1. It's neither prime nor composite. You have to know that. 2, on the other hand, is the only even prime number. Every other number that's even is a composite number because 2 will go into it, with the exception of 2 itself. 2 is a prime number because it's got 1 times 2. That it's, that's its only two factors. And 0, people ask me about 0. Well, 0 has multiple numbers that you can multiply to get 0, right? Anything times 0 is 0. Okay, now let's go on to the next thing. We're going to be talking about prime factorization. Well, what is prime factorization? Well, the word factorization means to take apart, to take the number apart. Whenever you hear factorization or to factor, you're going to factor. You're going to take that number apart. The difference with prime factorization, you want to know all the prime factors of that number. So if you have 8 and you say, okay, that's a composite number. And how do I get 8? 2 times 4. Well, 2 is a prime number, but 4 is not a prime number. So what is the prime, all the prime numbers that multiply to get 8? 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the third power, or 2 cubed. 2 to the third power is 8, and the prime factorization of 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 cubed. Because you can't say 2 times 4, because 4 is a composite number. So, I showed you that 25 was 5 times 5, and 20 is 2 times 2 times 5, or 2 squared times 5, because you could say 4 times 5, but 4 is not prime, it's composite, and you have to break the 4 down. But what if the numbers are larger? Because you can do these in your head. Uh, 12, what's 12? What two numbers do you multiply to get 12? You could say what? 3 times 4, or 2 times 6. Well, let's do um, 2 times 6. So 2 is prime, but 6 is composite. So what is the prime fact, what, what are the prime numbers that multiply to get 6? 2 and 3. So therefore, what's the prime factorization of 12? 2 times 2 times 3. You can do those in your head, and that's okay. If I give you one of those, you can do that. If you know that, you can write down 3 times 4, and then 2 times 2 times 3. Now, if the numbers are larger, though, Remember those divisibility rules we learned? Well, this is a reason why you use them. 
you use them so that you can find the prime factorization of 200 and you don't get confused. We're going to use factor trees. Now the trees go down, but when you factor it makes a tree. It's a regular looking triangle, right, instead of inverted triangle. But I always think of like a tree and then the roots go down in the ground and roots all split off. So you can, you know, you say bagel, no I say bagel. You say tomato, I say tomato. Uh, so it, we're going to call them factor trees because that's what the book says. So we're going to start with little lines. That's what I call my roots. But it could be the top of the tree. And we're going to use our divisibility rules and say, okay, how are we going to start? Well, it ends in zero, so what goes into it? Ten. Or you could see, oh, a hundred goes into it. But we'll go ten. And then ten times what will give me two hundred? Twenty. Now, neither one of these are prime. They're both composites, so we have to keep going. So we get two times five. I've got two more roots. See how the, and or you can see how the tree is shaping up. Now, 2 is prime and 5 is prime. And so I don't forget those when I write my final answer. I always circle each prime number as I achieve it, as I find it. So then we have 20, and we have 4 times 5, because you want to multiply whatever gets to 20. 5 is prime, see that? But the 4 is not. So we're going to keep going. 2 times 2. Oh, I've reached the bottom of my tree, and this is where you could bring all of this down, but it's extra work, and that's why I call them tree roots, because say this side of the, the roots kind of stopped. So now I have to write my answer, because prime factorization is writing all the numbers that are prime that are factors of 200, and we put them in numerical order. So we have how many twos? Three twos. Two times two times two. And what else do we have left? Two fives. Now, that's called expanded form, and you need to know that. Expanded form means you write the, the whole, all the prime factors out. Expanded form. Write that down. Or, the other way is exponential form. Exponential form. I'll write that one. Exponential form in prime factorization is simply rewriting this. It's 2 times 2 times 2 is 2 to the third power times 5 squared. That's the answer. You have to read the directions to find out which one. How do you check these? Well, instead of going left to right to multiply, I go right to left because it's easier to multiply by the smaller numbers instead of the larger numbers that are prime. So 5 times 5 is 25 times 2 is 50 times 2 is 100, times 2 is 200, so that's correct. Now we have 252. Now here's where the divisibility rules come up. Well, if 2 could go into it, could we find something higher? So we add these up. 2 plus 5 is 7 plus 2 is 9, so 9 will go into it. And then you might come over here and go, because you know 9 goes into it, because they add up to 9. Well, 9 goes in there 28 times. These are both composite, so we get 3 times 3. We're going to circle these because they have to go in our final answer because we need composite numbers. And then we have 4 times 7, which is, we circle the 7, 2 times 2, 2 is prime. And then we put these in numerical order, and the expanded form, E-X-P-A-N-D-E-D, -E -D, is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. The exponential form would be 2 squared times 3 squared times 7. And to check it, you would just go backwards. You could go 9 times, oh, excuse me, 7 times 9, because 3 squared is 9. 7 times 9 is 63, times 4 is 258. Okay, now I want you to try these. I want you to stop the video using your divisibility rules because these are going to be larger numbers except for that one. That one you can do in your head and just write the answer, okay, if you know it. But these others, I want you to pause the video and use factor trees for these three. But this one, you don't have to unless you want to. When you're ready, come back and I'll go over the answers. Welcome back. 
Okay, here, I hope you did well. I hope you did your divisibility rules because it goes so much quicker. This ends in a zero. And you'll notice that so 10 goes into both of those. I'm going to step back and let you check it. I'll say the answers. The first one, this is expanded form or exponential form. 2 times 5 cubed. 35 was 5 times 7. You could have just written 5 times 7. 3 was 2 squared times 5 squared times 7. 100 will go into that. 4, 80, 10 goes into that. Or 2, or 4. But I hope you picked the larger number because it's less work. But it came out as 2 to the 4th times 5. Pause the video if you need to, to, to write all that down and make your corrections. If you didn't get those answers, try to find your mistake. Okay, let's see what happens here. What if I give you the prime factorization? What might my question be? If I give it to you, I want to know the what? I want to know the number. So what number stands for 2 times 3 times 5 squared? Well, remember this is 5 times 5. So we can go 25 times 3, which is 75, times 2. Well, what's 75 times 2? Well, if you need to, you can come over here and you can go, oh, it's 150. So you would write 150. 25 times 3 times 2. Notice how I'm going right to left because it's easier for me. Then we have 7, and then what is 2 cubed? Remember, 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 7 times 8, 56. Then this one, it's easier for me to go right to left. If you want to go left to right to multiply, but it's easier to go right to left because 11 times 3 is 33, times 2 is 66. I'm not going to have you practice those because if I give you the prime factorization and say the number, you should be able to multiply the prime factors and give me the number. Right now I want you to write two things that you've learned from this video and one question. And I'll see you back tomorrow. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.